So, as usual, it's up to me to guard the galaxy. Some things never change. I just started playing this new game, Marvel Future Revolutions, and guys, y'all need to hop on this right now before it's too late. And I'm going to tell y'all about it in this video, so get ready, because I'm about to go in. Y'all know how I do. Whoa, who are you? A friend from the neighborhood. What's up, y'all? My name is Prince, and this is Hero Culture. This video, I'm going to tell y'all about this new game, Marvel Future Revolutions, and why you need to hurry up and jump on this now before it's too late. So Marvel Future Revolutions is a brand new mobile action RPG that officially dropped on August 25th. There was a soft launch about two months ago in Canada, but anyone who jumped on the Omega Watch server wouldn't be able to transfer their progress to the other servers once the game officially went live. So if you're seeing videos on the game from June or July of this year, that was people who got on that Canadian server. I considered it, but I had stuff to do, so I decided to wait. So it was really cool that the game went live on my birthday, but I was kind of busy on that day, but I mean, I'm playing now, and y'all, it was totally worth the wait because this game is more fun than I thought it would be. So the first thing that I want to talk about that I like about this game is the story because, I mean, y'all know me, I like a good story. Like, I have to know why I'm running around as Captain Marvel or as Spider-Man and I'm beating the brakes off of people. So as you've seen in the prologue videos, there's some cataclysmic event that a small team of superheroes are trying to prevent. Actually, AIM is trying to prevent that same event, but their solution is going to result in the destruction of an entire planet. And what's happening is, well, somehow other Earths have crossed over into the same dimension. And you can call this a crisis on infinite Earths type event because whatever is causing this, it's happened before. On this particular Earth where our heroes are fighting, their vision uses the fuel cells that were going to be used to power that bomb that AIM created, and he's going to use the equipment that Henry Pym built to prevent the event and basically phases one earth through the other one and he ends up creating like this new earth. The problem didn't stop there because like I said there are other earths that have crossed over into this dimension so there's still this threat of the convergence event happening all over again and there's also a fear that they might not be able to prevent the next one from destroying the planet. So it really falls in line with where the MCU is right now in phase four. Like we got teased about the multiverse in Spider-Man Far From Home, then in the Loki series we got to see the sacred timeline and learned about variants who are just displaced people thanks to the TVA who belong to these alternate timelines. And this thing with these Earths crossing over into other dimensions, it's like all of the timelines are starting to all run together. And I don't know, but it could be really cool if we find out that these Earths crossing over into the same dimension is the game's version of having a timeline that's pruned from whatever the sacred timeline is that maybe Kang the Conqueror is trying to preserve. And it would be cool to have some type of MCU tie-in like that too, you know, to help promote the game even more, but we'll see what's in store for the future. So in addition to playing through the story on all eight release day characters, there's also the endless grind of chasing stats to build up your hero in the true end game, which is acquiring more costume pieces you know, cause you gotta look good. In this game, unlike with Marvel's Avengers, all of the gear you acquire can change the look of your character. You can also use the transmogrify feature to set your own look from your collected costume pieces so that you keep the look you want as opposed to the gear that you're wearing. In addition to playing through the story, there are various PVE co-op opportunities like blitzes and raids. And of course, there are PVP and PVPVE events as well. The biggest part of the game right now is building up your squad. So, I mean, even though you might decide to focus on, say, Spider-Man or Captain America or Storm as your main character, well, you also get stronger by building up the other characters on your roster. So, I mean, who knows? You might even get stronger from spending time on Star-Lord, who actually was surprisingly fun to play. 
Now, being a free to play mobile game, the question is always going to come up about is this game pay to win? Now, I've been an MMO player off and on since I first started playing City of Heroes and The Matrix Online in 2004. So the idea of paying $15 a month subscription for a superhero game, I mean, that's not exactly foreign to me. Later in uh, City of Heroes game life, it went free to play and put newer content behind a paywall that you either had to subscribe to get or purchase from the in-game store. Now, in these kinds of mobile games, it actually is possible to go in and spend a lot of money on stuff that will clearly give your character an advantage. Some people are going to hear that and want to distance themselves from the game, and I mean, that's cool. I just say that if someone out there wants to spend $10,000 on their character, I mean, what does that have to do with me enjoying the game? Look, I just want to fly around and do cool Captain Marvel stuff after my workouts or when I'm not busy working on my other YouTube channel. I mean, like sometimes I need a break from talking about Bruce Lee and all kinds of martial arts stuff over on that channel. And I mean, if you have a problem with pay to win games, well, I mean, I got to break it to you, but life is kind of pay to win. Some people clearly have advantages over other people because they're rich or they won the genetic lottery or both. And I mean, like, what if you're a high school kid playing AAU basketball for the team that's sponsored by Jim Bob's Rib Shack in Nebraska, and you're going to be playing against Bronny James' team of future NBA stars at some AAU basketball tournament? Look, man, life is pay to win. So, hey, y'all, just get out there, shoot your shot and enjoy it. And speaking of things to enjoy, let me tell y'all something. So on my birthday, the devs did a live stream where they announced an event coming sometime this month in September. It's going to be an invasion event being led by the Mad Titan himself. Now, Thanos actually does appear in the story. I haven't reached that point yet, but the story deals with people who've been displaced on primary Earth because Thanos destroyed their planet. But this Thanos in the invasion event Maybe he's a variant like we saw in Avengers Endgame. I mean, who knows? Look, I'm just hoping to have at least my main Captain Marvel at a high enough level so that I can participate in this event because it sounds like it's going to be pretty cool. Also, in addition to this huge event, we're also getting a new hero, Magic, from the New Mutants. So that's two people affiliated with the X-Men in the game now. And I've heard people saying that Magneto could be coming. But, I mean, that's just people talking right now. So take that with a grain of salt. We'll have to wait and see how that one goes. So like I said, this game has a lot going for it right now. A deep story, lots to do, new events, and even more characters coming. Now, if you're the type of person that likes to rush through the content, look, I'm going to be honest with you. You might get quickly bored with this game. It's a little light on like real in-game content because part of building up your main character comes from leveling up your entire character roster. So that's what most people are doing right now. And it might take the average person a few months to get even two or three characters on their squad up to max level so that they can even be able to participate in any kind of serious in-game content. So for now, I'm hoping that there will be an evolving story to go along with the new character Characters that they're probably going to be adding to the game a lot. So if you're considering giving the game a shot, hey, feel free to hop on over to Wakanda 2 in the Southeast Asia region and look me up. I'm on Urban Acolyte. Maybe we can get an alliance team started over there. I mean, that would be pretty cool. So make sure to stay tuned here for more future Revolution story videos and uh, also MCU discussion videos because I do that kind of thing. You know, like the video that I did way back when on my favorite things about the Captain Marvel movie. Hey, man, can y'all tell that I really like Captain Marvel? <laughs> but anyway, thanks for hanging out to talk about heroes and geek stuff. Y'all keep on breathing and I'll see you in the next video.